better get out of here, Walter. He'll be home any minute. Mm. I love you, Walter. I love you more than anything else in the world. I'll see you later. I love you, Walter. I love you too, Mother. a long time ago while I was being interviewed for a job as a cashier at the Billy Graham Pavilion at the 1965 World's Fair. It was under these circumstances that I had my annual November breakdown. Going off, third floor, diabetes, consumption, diphtheria, hepatitis, bone fractures, pyorrhea, going up. Fourth floor, solarium, aquarium, sanitarium, drunk tank, celebrities, children's diseases, going up. Fifth floor, nervous breakdowns, last stop, going down. It looks like his trapezius has backed up into his fibula and caused a severe case of Bolivian hemorrhoids. I disagree. I feel this patient has a devious septum, which could very easily develop into a chronic foot fetish. In that case, there's only one thing we can do. And what's that, Dr. Bing Bang? A hysterectomy. Are you kidding? You need a license for that kind of stuff. And that's why I should never be anything more than an intern, you fop. This patient requires a hysterectomy and... Wait a minute. Don't make a move. I think I might have made a mistake. Hmm. Hmm? Hmm. Looks good. That's bad. I don't know how to tell you this, Mr. Densmore, but you're pregnant. If you had come to me a little bit sooner, I might have been able to help you. But it's too late now. You're in labor. I'll have to go into the hip. You did it! Mr. Densmore, it's a miracle! It's amazing! It's dynamic! It's below belief! What is it? 189 $10 bills! You found that in me? That's right, Mr. Densmore! I... Don't know if this will be of any help, but when I was five or six years old, I swallowed a nickel. Could I make a deposit? What? Would you swallow a couple of 20s for me? I'll tell you what. I'll give you a hundred in cash right now if you swallow two 20s. Leave me alone. Don't be a fool. If you start right now and keep swallowing, you could be a millionaire in less than six minutes. Now, will you swallow the two 20s? No deal. All right. I'll go somewhere else. As soon as he left, a feeling of purity and righteousness overcame me. Having given birth is an experience and a fulfillment that I'll never forget. The American Medical Journal never even mentioned me. I guess they feel too many people will swallow their paychecks and throw the whole economy out of whack. When I told my mother that I gave birth to $1,890, she said, I always knew you were creative. Get a haircut. When I told my father, he said, Bullshit! Where's the $4 you owe me? To heck with both of them. 
I'm proud to have had the experience, but I don't think I want to do it again. A cesarean through the hip ain't easy. What's going on? I sign my initials on you. I call you man on street, outside warehouse. As soon as you dry off, report to the Washington Square Gallery. When you get there, ask for art. Tell them Pop sent you. I'm pricing you at $1,700. You'll get 10%. Once you're sold, you're on your own. I usually don't do this, but since you're one of my best paintings, I'll personally escort you to the gallery. As soon as we get there, I'm going to hang you up on a hook on a wall so people can decide whether you're any good or not. But don't worry, you'll be sold right away because you're very pretentious. And even if you don't get sold, you don't have to worry because if worse comes to worse, I'll add you to my private collection in my apartment. Dog on floor, cat on table, wife in kitchen, it's priceless. As of right now, you're in, man. And that's where it is, that's where it's at. Just don't forget who put you there. It was under these circumstances that I had my annual January breakdown. Please don't accept any calls until I uh, finish, Mr. Dinsmore. Yes, doctor. Very well, Mr. Dinsmore. Your mother and father have requested that you visit with me uh, because they say that you say that you recently gave birth to some American currency. And they also say that you think that you are painting. Now, that's what they say. But what do you say? That's what counts. But before you say anything, I'd like to say that I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychoanalyst or a psychologist. I happen to be a wholesale cabbage dealer. I'm also a professor of logic, a man of science. And on weekends, I play the harp. By the way, I personally administer flagellations every Wednesday and Thursday from 3 to 5. If you're interested, you can make an appointment with my receptionist. And before we go any further, let's check your middle class rating. Who's your favorite painter? Norman Rockwell. Who's your favorite actor? Everett Dirksen. What's the difference between uh, fiction and nonfiction? About a dollar. What's the most frightening thing that ever happened to you? About five weeks ago, I thought I made my mother pregnant. I wouldn't worry about it. It's uh, rather a common fantasy, but it uh, can be difficult. I don't find it difficult. In fact, it's pretty convenient because my father works nights. When he's working, I'm with my mother. When he's home, I'm not there. In other words, when I'm in, he's out. When I'm out, he's in or whatever it is. Mr. Dinsmore, I can hardly believe my ears. Yeah? Well, I can't believe that head of yours either. Very well, we'll continue. What are the two most offensive things you've ever seen or heard? Amos and Andy. I'm going to say a series of words, and after each word, you say anything that comes into your mind. Say the secret word, and the duck will fly down with $100. Now, the first word is coffee. South Dakota. Sideways. Rumble seat. Horizontal. Hoagie Carmichael. Up. Yours. Uh, that will be all for today, Walter. You've uh, done very well indeed. Uh, before I go, can I touch it? Sure, if you think it'll make you feel better. Thank you. Skinhead is dialing my mother. Either you let me listen in or I'll tell him you were eavesdropping. Yeah? What's in it for me? A broken jaw and lots of misery unless you give me the phone. Hello? Mrs. Dinsmore? Yeah? Oliver Sinfield here. Oh, yes, doctor. How did you and Walter get along? Splendidly. Oh, you mean there's hope? Much more than that, Mrs. Dinsmore. Oh, how encouraging. I've never had anything more than hope. Now, on the negative side, uh, Walter has no imagination, no sense of humor, no sense of timing, and no flair for show business. And he hates women. I knew it, I knew it. Walter does have a lot of uh, psychological scar tissue, but it has nothing to do with his childhood. You better believe it. I forgot to mention that Walter is a chronic liar and that one of his biggest uh, fantasy fears is that he's going to get you pregnant. It's rather a common fantasy, so I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, I'm not worried. I always take my pills. Mrs. Dinsmore, this is outrageous. Dr. Sinfield, I'm well aware that what Walter and I are doing is taboo and against the law. But I'm willing to take the risk, because what Walter and I have is pure. Now, 
Will you be wanting to see him again? Definitely. In fact, I'd like to see both of you as soon as possible. We've got to get to the bottom of this. <coughs> Mrs. Dinsmore, I think there's someone else on the line. I'm onto your line, Sinfield. This is outrageous. Stop trying to exploit, hustle, and fleece my old lady. I've never been so insulted. You're young yet. Walter, you're embarrassing me. For you, that's a breakthrough. Oh, what have I done to deserve this? Nothing. Walter, will you please come home so we can discuss this thing sensibly? I'm peaceful. Well, what's that got to do with it? You get your ass home and no back talk. Goodbye. Please come home, Walter. No. I'll make French toast. Forget it. Why do you strike out at me? I breastfed you, took you out every day, cleaned your with your ears, shined your with your shoes, changed your with your diapers, and loved you more than anything else in the world. Everything you've just said has a universal ring to it. Or is it Warner Brothers? God damn you! Goodbye. I love you, Walter. Goodbye. Hubba, hubba. Don't worry about it. Ses boom ba. Bula bula. Vivo vivo in the vivo vivo fest. Oogie oogie wa wa. Push him back, push him back, way back. Whack a doo, whack a doo, whack a doo doo doo. Hold that line. Block that kick. We want a touchdown. I don't mean to be rude, but I have to leave. Before you split, how about putting a pink glow on my shoulders with a leather strap? I don't go that route. Oh, yeah? What's your story? I don't believe in violating people while they're on duty. I like a guy with principles. Uh, police, can I see you in my office? It's uh, nothing important. I just want to figure out your severance pay. Listen, Dimple Dome, you've got the wrong idea. We weren't doing anything. We were just discussing the pros and cons of draining all the water out of Long Island Sound. I also suggested that federal legislation be passed, making it mandatory that doctors and lawyers list their college grades next to their names in the phone book. Then we segued into the possibility of reintroducing the word all read as an alternative to... Mr. Dinsmore, that will be all. I also believe that second-hand contact lenses should be distributed to female midgets to be used as diaphragms. I feel this will alleviate... Mr. Dinsmore, that will be all. Mr. Dinsmore, that will be all. I'll give you five dollars for your socks. I'm a sock sniffer. How can you talk about sniffing socks when all those people are starving in China? Because I'm a sock sniffer. You may look down on me, but at least I have a purpose in life. Have you ever sniffed a sweat sock right after it's been through a football game? Not lately. Oh, you haven't lived, man. Maybe I can help you out. My ex-lover's directing a low-budget movie. We're always looking for extras. With that face, you could be launched. All you need is the right vehicle. How about a Bentley? Forget it. Well, if you ever want to sell your socks, come on up to my place. I'm at 53rd and Lex. I'll be there with bells on. Please don't. My mother sleeps late. Did you know that the whale in Moby Dick was really Esther Williams in a leather jacket? Forget it. My name's Baby Jane Shrimpton. Go see about this extra job. Tell the director that Gregory Miraculous and Jesus make us discovered you in a toilet. The only thing about these low-budget films is that all the action is behind the camera. Don't worry about it. This whole thing will blow over in less than an hour. So what do I care? I'll die of a broken heart if I don't sniff a sock before sundown. <laughs> Excuse me. The following morning, I made my motion picture debut. Places for the civilian review board sequence. Places. Let's get ready to roll, kids. Put away the hashish. If you're scheduled for this sequence, let's hop to it. 
Don't tarry, and don't forget that whatever we do here today will be seen later on at Card in Venice. So look like it cost a few dollars. Don't look low budget. Find out what this chump wants. Right. Could you tell me where the director is? Over there, honey. Okay, chump, this is what you do. First, you put on the costume that's hanging on the hook over there. Then go stand with the prisoner outside the homicide office over there. When I give you action, put the handcuffs on the prisoner, then take him inside the homicide office and deliver him to the desk sergeant. Don't say nothing or we'll have to pay you extra. And don't throw in any little bits of business because we're two years behind schedule. You understand everything I told you? Yes, sir. You lying bastard, you didn't understand the word I said. Yes, I did. Okay, then get with it then, chump. <laughs> My name is Leo Realism. I'm only the lighting man around here, but next week I'm starting production on my own picture. I'm looking for an actor who radiates emptiness, despair, and futility. You've got the perfect face. All you have to do is sit on a park bench for seven hours and puff on a cigarette. The name of the film is Smoke. I thought I told you to go over there and stand with the prisoner. If you can't follow instructions, okay, but don't waste your time talking to this stiff. You can't direct nothing. Everything you direct looks like a travelogue. You fascist bastard. If it wasn't for me, you'd be on unemployment with the rest of the scum of the underground cinema. As for you, you go over there and put the handcuffs on the prisoner like I told you. Yes, sir. I saw him first, so hands off. What's the matter, afraid of a little competition? If you're still interested in being in my picture, give me a call. Leo Realism. I'm listed in the yellow pages under Truth. This is the last time I'm going to tell you to go over there with the prisoner over there. We're ready to roll over here. Don't put your bracelets on me. I'm innocent. I didn't do it. I swear I didn't. Somebody help me. Somebody care. Not yet, Reggie. The cameras ain't on yet. Bomb China, bomb Arizona. I want some beef jam. Everybody break for lunch. Back in one hour. I want justice. I want recognition. Bomb the chinks. Legalize Kabayazin. I want my nose plucked. Shut your hole, Reggie. Reggie had a triple neck spasm, and the two of them left for lunch, locked in a discussion about the advantages of videotape as opposed to other things. The studio was empty. I sat for a moment and meditated. I decided to wear the cop's uniform home for lunch. On the way downtown, I stopped off at Radio City and directed some traffic. On 42nd Street, a man ran out of a scroungy magazine store and handed me a $50 bill. I'm sorry I missed you. I got all the other chaps this morning. Don't mention it. I have an 8x10 picture of Margaret Rutherford's ass. But would you like to see it? No, thanks. Okay. I'll see you next week. But before I forget, I just got a shipment of 4x5s of Bertrand Russell in a steam bath. Spread the word around, will you? I headed downtown. When I reached my neighborhood, the punkos gazed at me. I retaliated by twirling my pistol. I wanted a jazz score to accompany me down the block. I must have been impressive because they started mumbling to each other in flamenco. Where are you going? As I menacingly surveyed the situation, a brick and a barrel full of garbage grazed my nose. At Times Square, I helped a few pedestrians and then headed back to the studio. On 8th Avenue, I ran into the real McCoy. I didn't want to disturb him, so I tiptoed. I ain't never seen you before. What precinct you in? The west side What did you say? The, the 52nd Precinct. Yeah? That's in Staten Island. What are you doing way over here? I'm looking for a thrift shop. Yeah? You want to pick up a few loiterers and wipe them over? You hold them while I give them their lumps. What are you saying? No, thanks. You don't know what you're missing. Yesterday, I bashed the junkie skull in, and about an hour ago, I pistol whipped the jaywalker. No, thanks. Come on, I can't do it alone. Be a sport. I'm not interested. Chicken shit? I couldn't take any more, so I fired two warning shots into his shoulder. I headed back to the studio. You can go home now. It's all over. 
One of the actors bumped into a camera and all the unions walked out. As I stood there absorbing all the culture, Reggie ran over and gave the director a quick hickey right between the shoulder blades. I hate to be a deadbeat, so I joined the doings. A character actress dressed in a nun's costume unbuttoned her habit and dragged me into the homicide office. Don't ever say Sister Basilica didn't give you a fair shake. I won't. Gotta draw the line somewhere. Have whatever you want in this life. By the way, what do you want? I don't know. I guess the only thing I really want is you. I love you, Walter. I know I'm robbing the cradle, but at least it's my own. Are you? Don't be absurd. I have to. It's my nature. It was my first cousin, Levitica. Levitica is a unique, chic, feminine mystique. The purpose of her call was to urgently summon me to her boudoir on the third floor of the Dixie Hotel. Hey, what do you want? Room 301. You want to see her, huh? What are you? One of her studs? I happen to be Miss Oho's cousin. Miss Oho? This is O'Horgan, the day clerk. Now listen, sorry to disturb you, but someone down here says he's your cousin. Whatever you say, you can go up now, cousin. When I entered my cousin's room, she was sprawled on the floor, skimming through a copy of Field and Stream. Hello, Walter. Is you is or is you ain't my baby? As you know, I'm such a committed vegetarian that I won't even eat animal crackers. But even though I'm avant-garde, there's one thing I'm bourgeois about. Eight months ago, you and me did some heavy body work. As you can see, I'm all saw, Walter. Knocked up. Pregnant. You gotta marry me. On second thought, why don't you just support me? You wanted my brains, my body, and my bird. I gave you everything. Now you gotta give me something. If you don't, I'll tell your mother that you dig sodomy, and I'll tell her that you sleep with a hamster. By the way, Alexander Graham Bell never made a call, and the Darktown Strutters never had a ball. When someone you're fond of, especially a relative, puts you in a position like this, the burden of responsibility is overwhelming. So I picked her up, carried her over to the window, and dropped her. She didn't make it to the pavement because she landed on top of a movie marquee. 
I eased my way back to the lobby. Got yourself some nepotism, huh? Listen, boy chick, not only am I Miss Oho's cousin, but I happen to be a movie producer. Miss Oho will be leaving soon for the coast. In fact, she's currently billed above the title of the picture next door. You gotta show me, Jackson. He pompously followed me to the street and looked up at the marquee. My cousin's leg was dangling over the edge. The desk clerk crumpled up on the sidewalk and had a coronary festival. As soon as he turned in his spikes, an interpreter of the law approached and presented me with his credentials. You know this guy? Never saw him before. And what's he doing dead on your feet then? I knew my rights as a citizen, so I handed him a $50 bill. Uh, this is only circumstantial. I uh, need more evidence. I gave him my wristwatch, the rest of my change, and a gift certificate to Rikers. Consider the case closed. It started to get dark and it was raining, so I decided to go south to Philadelphia and visit my older brother, Felix. Good to see you, Walter. Long time no see. Before I forget, I'd like you to meet my wife, Lily. Lily, this is my brother, Walter. I've heard so much about you. You didn't tell me you had a brother. Go in the kitchen. There's only one way to beat the system, Walter. I'm going to open up my own business. I want to get me some land just outside of Albuquerque and get me enough money to open up an amusement park. My park is only going to be open to white people, but on the inside, there's only going to be black people. I'm going to have rides like Whip the Slave and Lynch a Nigger. And I'm going to have chain gangs walking around singing folk songs written by Peter, Paul, and Mary. And way off in the woods, for an extra quarter, there's going to be black men raping white girls. I'm going to make millions, Walter, and lots of black people are going to have jobs and security just because of me. You want to help me raise the money and go into business with me? Don't forget to come back and see us sometime. Anytime you're in this neck of the woods, give us a call. You know where we are. Drop us a line once in a while. Think of this house as a second home. Stay in touch. Don't be a stranger. We're all God's children. Pray and the world is yours. Have faith and you shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Give us this day our daily bread. What you've seen up until now is part one of my annual January breakdown. What you're about to see is part two. I kind of like part two. It's got a collagic, dreamy, angelic quality. It's one of my favorite breakdowns. Miss Fifield, you are Walter Dinsmore's grade school sweetheart. Is that correct? Yes. After we graduated, I went to work as a wardrobe mistress for the road company of the Jewel Box Review. Everything was fine till my friends started calling me a camp follower. <laughs> That's very interesting. But could you give our nationwide audience some information about Walter Dinsmore? Walter was an excellent fifth grade student. But in lieu of what's happened, I'd have to say he had all the earmarks of a thrill killer, a pornographic distributor, a gate crasher, and a kitten drowner. <laughs> Why didn't you report these observations to the proper authorities? If he's innocent, he'll get off. But if he's guilty, he'll have to suffer the subsequences. Personally, I think he's guilty, but he does deserve a fair trial. So I'd rather wait until after he's convicted before I make a statement. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Fifield. We now switch you back to Miami, inside the Dade County Jail, where 27-year-old Walter Dinsmore is being held for the murder of... Thank you, Floyd. This is Naomi Della Roca at the Dade County Jail. It's a wonderful day here in Miami, temperature in the mid-80s. Police Chief Herb Frickacy is about to make a statement. Chief Frickacy, what's the situation at this moment? I've just spoken with District Attorney Cy Klaus, so I'm not at liberty to say anything. But I will say it's a cinch case. I have no further statement except I will be bringing the prisoner down this corridor any second. Thank you, Chief Fricassee. 
And now this is Naomi Della Roca switching you back to Floyd Gondoli in New York. Thank you, Naomi. We now switch you back to Miami for an important development. Thank you, Floyd. This is Naomi Della Roca at the Dade County Jail. Temperature has dropped a few degrees, but it's still a lovely day. Wind from the northeast at 12 miles an hour. Come on down. Less than five seconds ago, Walter Dinsmore was shot and murdered three feet from where I'm standing right now. Funeral services will be held tomorrow morning in Fort Lauderdale at 11.15. The forecast for tomorrow is mild and clear with winds from the southeast at eight miles an hour. The person identified as Dinsmore's killer is Dinsmore's mother, Mrs. Pomona Dinsmore, alias Ruby Wade, alias Sparky. We now switch you back to Floyd Gondoli in New York. Thank you, Naomi. We interrupt this breakdown to bring you the following announcement. Kiss Ruth, kiss Ruth. Kiss Ruth protects you from sneaky advances. Wear it at parties. Wear it at dances. When you're in danger, put your kiss proof on. And in a matter of seconds, the pervert will be gone. Kiss proof lips to kiss the thing for you. Kiss proof lips it makes you feel new. It gives you confidence. It gives you class. Wear it at communion. Or wear it at mass. be a respectable virgin, all ready to go, all because Kiss Proof made you say no. Remember, Kiss Proof, Kiss Proof, Kiss Proof, be a bitch tonight. I'm St. Peter. How about a kid? You look very sinful, so you'll probably have your judgment right away. By the way, when he gets here, don't act scared, because even though he comes on real pious, underneath it all, he's a necrophiliac. He's also a bigot and a racist. He hates Armenians and he hates war. Go up to the altar and make like a praying. Act humble, but also make him think you got balls. do it. Are you the Virgin Mary? Just call me Mary. Okay. Mm. Mm. You know who is on his way down right now. Walter Dinsmore, age 27, New York City. New York Tower! You thankless, sinful, Caucasian, spider, single sex, and mentally retarded, middle-class, heterosexual, I love you. I bless you in the name of the Tao, the Joe, and the and Dustman. Listen, you think you deserve to enter the kingdom of heaven? Yes, sir. Well, you can't come in. I'm going to send you back because you haven't died enough. Soon as you hit the street, I'm going to give you a message. See you next time around, baby. You tell Charlton Heston I'm waiting for him. They had a bad day. They heard Bobby Kennedy try to walk on water. Dinsmore, you're a disgraceful, vacillating weakling, but underneath it all, you're a poet. 
I giggled and blushed and started writing my acceptance speech for a Pulitzer Prize. A poetic barn fire was in me, so I dragged myself to a phone and called the Dean of Poetry at the new school. The Dean's busy right now. They're installing the music in his office. After they put the music in, he's got a class. And after the class, he's being interviewed by the realist. And after the interview, he's going to play handball. And after that, he and I are going to Mexico to get married. When can I call back? In five minutes. You never know when a schedule will change. On second thought, just come on over. You sound like a nice guy. I'll cancel the rest of his appointment. How long will it take you to get here? Eleven minutes. Well, I'll probably be out to lunch. Just sit down till I get back. If you feel like joining me for an English and coffee, I'll be at Prexy's. If I'm not at Prexy's, I'll be at White Tower. And if I'm not at White Tower, I'll be in a phone booth making an obscene call. Well, I have to go now. The dean wants me. It's been nice talking to you. You've been wonderful. I was 11 minutes away from being a man of letters. So in order to sensitive effect, I sprinkled some murine in my eyes. I then composed myself, and with a flow of dignity, I headed to the new school. The dean's right in there, but be very quiet. And don't mention Robert Frost that he come after you with a bowie knife. <laughs> Are you who I think you're who? I think so. Are you the dean of poetry? Until last week, I was working as a drag queen for the CIA. I might also mention that I'm a civil rights buff and I believe in socialized religion and interfaith picnics and... Hey, wait a minute. Are you a newspaper man? No, I'm a real man. So you want to be a poet, eh? Yes, sir. Have you ever written anything? One poem. Well, I would it, I would it. Let's hear what you've done. Knees, knees, knees. I met my miniskirt nymphette on a cross-Atlantic jet flight. When we arrived in Barcelona, we were very surprised because Barcelona is where we took off from. The pilot explained that he had circled the airport for three days because he said life goes in circles. My miniskirt and I checked into a motel, and as we were getting into bed, we spotted an old Negro looking in the window. Miniskirt said not to worry because he was probably a peeping Uncle Tom. I love miniskirt. She's a gas. Knees, knees, knees. What kind of crap is that? Either you want to be a poet or you want to be part of the cultural explosion. What's it going to be? I want to be a poet. Trotsky was a Mexican. What? Never mind. Be here tomorrow morning at 8.30 and bring a pencil. I felt like I was standing on a meaningful threshold about to enter a world of creativity that would eventually lead me to a profile in the New Yorker. The next morning, I brightened the dean's door. Much to my chagrin, he was stuffing all his belongings into a shopping bag. I'm finished. I recommend that you study with B.B. Ciccolino. She's the creative writing instructor down the hall. You can't miss her. Where are you going, sir? I just got a Ford grant to study the lack of communication within the FCC. I wish you the best, sir. Don't bug me. I'm on a trip. Good luck, sir. I'm gone, baby. I'm gone. Hitler is a hairdresser and alive in Los Angeles. I hope... The world's right out there, man. But don't mention Mary McCarthy and do you in. Now, look, man. I live on 120 or 50, you dig? And I know what's happening out there. I mean, I see the day-to-day -day life, you know... Like all these damn liberals come on the streets, you know, one block, or they go into a bar and they think they know what's happening, you know. But, man, you got to live here day to day, and then you realize that man is not an entity, but merely the extension of his own ego, you dig? is loaded with social significance. Within the total spectrum, it might even be a classic. Even though you're paying for this session, I have a feeling that the next time around, I'll be picking up the tab. 
You've got that certain something, Wally, so don't cop out on your sellout. I want you to get right down to the nitty-gritty, but don't lose the beat. As soon as you find the truth, wail on through till you hit the transition. Then head straight for your own point of view, let loose, and break up the ozone. Then ease it on down to the finish. I smell greatness, Wally. Just sing it, man. Let nature take its course. And we'll have ourselves another golden disc. Just for you, baby. Not only are we going to make millions, Wally, but this little black donut's going to become a standard. Because it's you, baby. Because it's you. You ready to roll? Crazy. Roll it. Deviant Records, Master Manoro, 45 RPM, hey, 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 flip side of yeah, 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 featuring Walter and his vacuums. Take one. Black man, I negligee. I love it when you wear it. My heart strings go up loud. I love it when you lacerate me. My back feels just like butter. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. With your black man, I negligee. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. With your black man, I negligee. So kick me. In the shins, and don't forget the boots, and wrap me in the mouth, and yank up my hair by the roots. Hey, 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 with your black leather negligee. Hey, 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 with your black leather negligee. I love it when you wear it. My heart strings go up loud. I love it when you lacerate me. My back feels just like butter. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. With your black leather negligee. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. With your black leather negligee. So kick me in the shins. And don't forget the boots. And wrap me in the mouth. Forget it. Forget it. What's the matter, Wally? I didn't feel it. I'm going to go out and walk among my people. See you later. What can I tell you? He's a genius. Nitwit. Play the flip. The flip side. Who's the girl with class and dignity? Who's the girl with lots of integrity? I'll tell you who will be my woman She's my chick Fine She's fine She's my baby She's my steady She's mine She's mine She's my lover She's my friend She's my brother She's my buddy, she's my wife, she's my mother, she's all things to all men, they fine, and that's fine, she's weird, wacky, horny and sick, and fine, and that's fine, she's mine, and that's fine. She's weird, 
wacky, horny, and thick, and mine, and that's mine. After eight years, they fired me. Up until two hours ago, I worked for an ad agency by the name of Put Tone and Fetish, and they fired me. You want to know why they fired me? They fired me because I came up with an original idea. That's why they fired me. Put Tone and Fetish, after eight years, and they fired me. Don't be so self-righteous, you little guinea. Get back in there and fight. The following morning, I was hired by a catering service to dish out potato salad at a bar mitzvah in Mineola, Long Island. As it turned out, the potato salad got misplaced on the way out from the city. I kicked it off the truck in Jamaica. Slum section, social commitment. As soon as we arrived at our destination, the boss caterer summoned me. Hey, schmuck. The name is Dinsmore. Okay, Dinsmore. Here's the way it is. Since there ain't no potato salad, you're fired. You can go back to the city now or wait for me on the truck or you can come inside and save the olive. Any way you look at it, you're not getting a penny. I know you'd like to feather bet on me, schmuck, but you're not going to get away with it. Okay, I'll serve the olives. The bar mitzvah was in full swing. <laughs> They were mostly middle-class rejects, but I did spot one member of the jet set. She was sitting under a table pretending to read a book. She looked like somebody who loved geometry. She wore a smile, she wore glasses, and she wore a yellow ribbon in her armpit. She looked like the kind of girl who'd rip up a magazine before she'd leave it on the subway. She also looked like she'd been dropped kicked by the whole northern hemisphere. Even though I'd never seen her before, she reached in a gunny sack and took out a pair of scissors and cut me a lock of her hair. I didn't want to say anything because she might have turned out to be the Messiah. Hello. 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 At this rate, we'd still be holding hands on our golden anniversary. So in order to speed things up, I reached under her dress and introduced myself. <laughs> I own the catering outfit that's catering these festivities. I feel it's good policy to mingle with the guests. Breaks down the class barrier. You mingle with everyone the same way you're mingling with me? On the contrary, I think you're special. Thanks. One of your employees wants you. He's looking for a raise. I'll negotiate with him later. Shall we go out on the terrace? Sure. What's your name? Walter Densmore. What's yours? Rhoda. Rhoda Dendrum. Listen, Rhoda. You put a pretty good tremor in my tick -roo, roo How about a big kiss of wang-wang on your ruby nugget? No. When we were on top of the table, you let me put my hand underneath your... Well, I don't mind that. But my mother says that kissing a boy only leads to trouble and danger and skepticism. Her words of wisdom made me realize that she was more than just a passing fancy. So I took off her dress, removed her shoes, ripped off her stockings, pulled down her underwear, and unlocked her ankle bracelet. Jeez, it's breezy. Don't worry about it. Listen, Mac, before we go any further, I want to get one thing straight. I ain't no harlot. That goes without saying. But you don't have anything to worry about. I'm just like an art film. I never fade, and I got a lot of special effects. Sounds groovy. What the hell are you doing, schmuck? I'm looking for the potato salad. <laughs> Son of a bitch, you're gonna cost me my business. He lunged at me, but I gallantly stepped aside and let him sail over the balcony. Ah. He made a beautiful six-point landing in the middle of a four-way intersection. Gee, it's breezy. 
don't worry about it. If I'm not mistaken, I heard that man say that you were ruining his business. Why would he say a thing like that? I couldn't take any more, so I guided her into a horizontal pose in back of somebody's union suit. We were at the starting gate. We were off. We were in the far turn. He seemed like a nice guy. We were in the back stretch. I was closing fast. Gee. We were coming down to the wire. I turned on a quick burst of speed and finished way ahead of her. I waited at the finishing line, a sportsman-like gesture, but she never showed up. Some fun you are. I felt a strain coming on, so I scratched myself from the race. Still a time. I stood up and returned Rhoda's belongings. While she was rearranging her ankle bracelet, I looked over the balcony. Traffic was held up for miles. The ambulance hadn't arrived yet. The police hadn't arrived yet either. The kid who was getting bar mitzvah had gone downstairs and tried to organize things and had gotten run over. So there were two corpses in the intersection as Rhoda and I watched the sun go down. Ich hab dir in Tokus, wer geschwollen, so dir stinken zum Kopf, I put dir in Gorkel. As I stood there evaluating my inability to function, I had my annual January breakdown, which is a little bit different from my other breakdowns, because in my January breakdown, I get to say something. Oh, Walter, thanks to Dibbick, you've come home. Dear son, I have some terrible news for you. Your father is dead. What did he do, drink himself to death? On the contrary, it was sclerosis of the liver. At first, I thought he took an overdose of cocaine, but the doctor told me it was a combination of the gout and rickets on his carbuncles. But then the nurse told me it was a benign hangnail. Mother's paradoxes were beginning to get the best of me, so I picked up a claw hammer and tapped her on the cranium. She was still standing, so I backed her in the Adam's apple with a root beer bottle. She went bye-bye. She started to draw flies, so I called the police and explained what had happened. The chief inspector arrived and surveyed the situation. He knew my mother personally, so he reported the death as a mercy killing. He gave me the following instructions. Put your mother in a box and take her down to the airport. Find the airlines with the worst safety record and book her all around the world. As soon as the inspector left, Mother miraculously sat up and said, You can't kill real love, Walter. Let that be a lesson to you. I know the truth when I see it. So two days later, we went down to City Hall and got legally peacefulized. Mother and I live in a rent-controlled building just outside of Manhattan, and we're going to have a baby any second. The first time I felt the baby kick, um, I can't explain it, but some of you know what I mean. Anyway, this morning I finally came to grips with myself, or grew up, or something. I got out of bed at 7.30, kissed Mother's stomach, and headed straight for the Queens County branch of the New York State Welfare Department. I applied for, and I am about to receive what's lawfully and rightfully mine. I don't intend to collect welfare for the rest of my life, but it's the beginning.
Man, you just seen the end. But look, let me tell you something. That ain't really no end. That ain't no end at all, man. Because this is just the beginning, man. Every boy, boy, white and black, gonna run on down the street, gonna find victory, gonna find freedom, man, gonna expand his consciousness, you dig? Like me, man, like I've been on 300 trips, man. That's why I can talk with all this purvey and esteem, you dig? That's why I know what's happening on every damn scene. I know who's putting it down, who's laying it straight, and who is walking the crooked mile, man. But let me tell you one thing. Man, there ain't really no end, man. That was an example of white front lash, man. Now I'm going to give you some example of black whiplash, man. You're looking at people making it on the screen, man. If our old lady Queenie took a look at this, man, she would come up and bat me side the head. What, you kidding for going a picture like this? What, you pay two dollars? You shouldn't have paid nothing, man. What the hell kind of picture is this on the ground, over ground, and all this child? What, you kidding me? I'm going back to Hollywood where I belong. I used to say things in movies like, uh uh, I ain't no zombie, you know? And they classified me as an Uncle Tom actor, but let me tell you something, I made some bread, you dig? I used to come down to the set in the Rolls Royce to do my little, you know, beggar bit. I made some bread there. What the hell I get for this? I ain't get nothing for this, man. You dig? So that's where it's at, man.